Well, in an act of injustice and failure to protect independent citizen journalism, uh, the United States Supreme Court refused to provide certiorari several, in several related appeals filed by pro-life activists, including Troy Newman, the president of Operation Rescue. The decision ends the defendant's efforts to obtain justice after Planned Parenthood used lawfare and resulted in a judgment in fees totaling more than $18 million. The activists were wrongly convicted in a San Francisco federal court under the Racketeer-Influenced and Corruption Acts, RICO is what it's called, after Planned Parenthood sued them for the 2015 release of a series of undercover videos detailing the abortion cartel's secret participation in what appeared to be illegal profit-taking from the trafficking of tissue and organs harvested from the bodies of those babies that had been aborted at Planned Parenthood. Troy Newman, the president of Operation Rescue and the lead defendant in Newman versus Planned Parenthood, is with me now. Troy, good to have you here. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, all right. So tell me the story here then. Um, you were focused and, and targeted. Then you sued them, but you get no relief. Is that my takeaway here? That's essentially it. Look, this case was lost in a federal courtroom in San Francisco seven years ago. An Obama appointed judge decided this was not about the sale, the illegal sale of, of human body parts, fetal body parts, but instead it was about our non-disclosure agreements and illegal, quote, illegal filming of these abortionists discussing how they slice and dice babies and sell their parts. So the whole case was about a non-disclosure agreement. We're all the way to the Supreme Court. We lost. I'm a racketeer. You might as well call me the godfather, like I'm Al Capone or something like that, corrupt organization. But they're the ones that were caught red-handed, literally red-handed, with blood on their hands, discussing, talking about, uh, conspiring to sell baby body parts. Yeah. How sad is that, honestly? How many abortions will be performed today in America, and how many of those body parts will be distributed around for who knows what? Right, honestly, you know, it gets passed around for scientific experimentation and this and that. It's true, isn't it, Troy? You know, look, it, it, it was, it, it's, it's something beyond comprehension, and it shocked the world in 2015 and 16 when we released these videos from the very first time. I funded it. I started it. We organized it, and we released it in 2015. They immediately came after us, like you said, with lawfare. But what we didn't do is we did not expose the purveyors or the buyers, the purchasers, who the end users of all these baby body parts. And now we see with all the COVID vaccine, vaccines, the big pharma, the big universities, and all the kickbacks that our politicians receive, people like Fauci was one of the recipients of these baby body parts. We now see how powerful the cult of abortion and child killing and baby body parts really is. This is still going on throughout the abortion industry worldwide because there's a huge vacuum that's sucking in these body parts that are uh, that are a result of innocent children being killed and massive amounts of NIH money being sent back into the abortion cartel to fund these gruesome experiments. Yeah, it, it, it is a, um, as I say, a sad commentary on the state of affairs now. Now, having said that, several states, obviously, in the wake of the rejection of Roe v. Wade by the Supreme Court last June, uh, a lot of states have uh, very few abortions, if any, at this point. Other states have made abortion legal until the kids, like, in the fifth grade, uh, which is bizarre, but that's what they've done. You know, I don't mean to make light of it, but they've gone so far to the left, it's sure. grotesque, and up to the moment of birth, right? Um, so did, you, did we win when Roe v. Wade was tossed out? Or did we lose? And I mean, we as a as a as a country, as a people, right? So th that's an excellent question. You hear people on both sides. Look, when the Supreme Court said in Dobbs, "We are now out of the abortion business. We're no longer going to decide on any abortion issue," which is what it did in 1973. It took all the control under its umbrella. Now we have 15 states for the first time since 1973. 15 states are completely abortion free. We're saving one third of all the children that were scheduled to have an abort or to be to be killed. So it's a complete victory. And there's going to be states, yes, crazy states like California, New York, that want to kill children all the way up to birth and after birth. And they want to sell their body parts on the wholesale market, like chopping up an old 1969 Corvette or something like that and sell the engine and so forth out. 
But that's where the dividing lines are being drawn. Now, it's almost like a civil war type of situation. God forbid it gets into a hot war, but we're definitely in a cold war right now, cold civil war, where states are crazy, taxation, murder rate, uh, violence, abortion, et cetera, and then states that are somewhat sane. And so we see a huge... Uh, repopulation. People from California are moving to the Midwest. People that, uh, that don't want to deal with the New York craziness are moving down to the South, down to Florida and so forth. And I, I just shudder to think what sort of judgment God's going to bring on this nation for the slaughter of all these children. Now you wonder, um, you know, people are fleeing for all sorts of uh, states, different reasons, jobs, freedom, uh, protection of the Second Amendment, protection of the unborn, be it Tennessee or Texas or Florida, wherever they're going, they're going to places where uh, their belief systems line up. That's why you're seeing a migration away from blue states like Illinois and Michigan and Pennsylvania or purple states, whatever they may be, doesn't matter. People are leaving for all of those reasons I just gave you, proving without the shadow of a doubt that these these far left progressive agenda items are being rejected by Americans across the country. I mean, not just abortion, but a whole host of things, Troy, right? That's right. And the the experiment, as uh, President Lincoln said, of we the people, by the people, for the people, is being ruined before our very eyes because the people, like Joe Biden said not too long ago, I don't work for you. Excuse me? You definitely do work for us. If you're in the federal government, the state government, local government, you work for the people, and they're cramming these agendas down our throat. And the only recourse we have when they're rigging elections and stealing things right from under our very eyes is to reject that and move to someplace better. And some, like you said, like states yeah. like, like Kansas or Texas, Tennessee, Florida, it's Georgia, et cetera. Um, and another embarrassing day for the president today. They call a lid, meaning he won't be seen in public today, at 11.32 in the morning. He won't be doing meetings. Well, he's just gone. No, I mean, the former president, Donald Trump, will speak. The former speaker, Kevin McCarthy, will speak about the, the horrific uh, you know, events happening in, in Israel. But our president, nowhere to be found. We have no leadership in this country today. We have a, a leadership a void, as far as I'm concerned. Well, Troy, thank President you for being Applesauce here. President Applesauce is sitting up there in Washington, D.C., taking his afternoon nap, getting fed applesauce, and saying that a boy. Well, Susan Rice and Obama and all the others are running the state of affairs, and let let, let it be known, the, the horror that we're seeing on the streets of Israel is equal to the horror we see inside the, the abortion clinics in the United States. And the Obama administration, Biden, O'Biden is how I call him, they're all in favor of this this cabal of disgusting activity that flies in the face of normalcy and every American sense of justice. All right, good conversation. I appreciate you being here. Wish it had turned out a little bit better for you, but hey, you've made progress. I'm the Godfather, and we're going to keep keep going forward. There you go. All right, uh, there you have it. When we come back, now we're going to shift gears a little bit. Squad member in Michigan, the far left Democrat firebomb Rashid Tlaib facing criticism for her despicable response to the Hamas terrorist attacks. That story more after the break. 